No, word about security. Let's let's talk about security a little bit. <clears throat> uh, that's what this video is going to be about. You know, I'm gonna try to make it brief, real brief. Uh, word about security. So, listen. You got the criminal law. You got criminal code. You got civil code, and you know policies and everything. Let's just talk criminal code policy. So you you get a job at some site. So the law generally states that you can do X in whatever city or state that you're in. You, as a as a citizen, because that's all you are, a security, a citizen. A citizen has the right to do this. Your policy, your security company's policy, cannot exceed. Oh, what the civil authorities, what authorities say that you can't do as a private citizen. Okay, so if, if the policy exceeds that, then the policy is wrong. And you shouldn't do it. You shouldn't follow. You shouldn't adhere to all that policy. Uh, at the same time, even, even if, if uh, the civil authorities say you can do that, but the policy or the post orders of that site say that you can't do that, then you cannot exceed that policy. You'll be, you'll be, God, why don't I think about this pimp language? You'll be out of pocket. You'll be, you'll be wrong. Uh, you cannot do that. <clears throat> you're, t you're taking on more liability for your actions. So, really, don't do that. Trust me, it's, it's not going to work. It's not going to be in your best interest. It won't go the way that you think it will go. It will go absolutely against you. Uh, also, let's talk about, you know... Uh, uh, people saying that security's function is just to stand there and be pretty. He, kind of funny. It reminds me of the time I was in this this uh, uh, racetrack gas station, and I'm there in my uniform. I got all my gear on, and on the back of my vest it says customer service, and I got a couple of white guys standing behind me. And they said that's pretty much all he can do, and I was just kind of, I was just kind of laughing. And, and this is before this thing broke loose on the news, and I was like, man, these guys don't fucking know what I can do. But that's everybody's perception of security that you pretty much can't do anything. And what it is, is the policy of the company. Uh, uh, and maybe that's what the management wants. That's what the, the client wants. They don't want you to do anything. They just want you to observe and report because really what people don't know, and some people don't know, is that even though they hired the security company, the security company's got $2 million worth of insurance, uh, that, you know, in certain states, the company that hired the security company can also get sued because they should have vetted out that company and the people that were coming on to their sites <coughs> more often. I mean, you should have vetted out those people and to know what they were about. So they might be liable too, so they might get sued as well. Now, if we're talking about security companies, let's talk about training. I can't talk about every security company. I haven't worked for every security company, but most security companies I work for, the training is laughable. The 24-hour security uh, training for a basic guard, laughable. It's you know you watch some videos, and you get you stand there and you get people lying to you, telling you what you can and what you cannot do. They say legally you cannot do this, and I'm like, that's not the truth. I don't speak up because you know I'm there to to make a buck, but that's not true. I mean I watch people. Uh, so-called trainers just absolutely positively unequivocally lying but I take that back I did sometimes call them out I said well you can't do that because cold is, but your policy says that you can't do that and then they corrected themselves to say yeah the policy can't do that in fact the last place that I interviewed at <clears throat> that used to be to be uh, that was ran by this this former APD officer 25 hours I mean 25 years his trainer of uh, their you know, guy, you know, asked why did you have to have a blue card uh, to carry a gun at security in, in the state of Georgia. Um, and, and he was told about an officer that got shot at a Kroger and died, but he didn't have a blue card. And so he didn't have the prerequisite training. And if he had that training, then, you know, he probably wouldn't have died. And I didn't say anything, but that was bullshit. That was a, that was unmitigated bullshit. I, I've taken that training, and you know they want you to know how to operate the weapon, and, and they want to make sure that if you pull the trigger, that that you have a reasonable chance of hitting the target, and not hitting someone else. And then they they touch upon the law just a little bit, but their general policy is the gun shouldn't leave the holster. Really, the fuck out of here with that. Uh, 
So with that guy, you know, that guy, you know, died not because he didn't have the training. That guy died because he got caught slipping, I guess. I don't know. I wasn't there. I can't tell you what the fuck happened. But I watched him just lie to this guy. That training doesn't prepare you for what the fuck goes on in the street. And if you're used to rain shooting, uh, that shooting doesn't prepare you for those kind of uh, uh, violent, hostile, uh, very fast, intense uh, 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 interactions, man. I mean, shooting at the range with all that, you know, with no, pretty much no, no adrenaline and, and a static target ain't nothing like... Uh, uh, shooting at a moving target that's ready to shoot back at you with all of the adrenaline surging through your body and, you know, your tunnel vision and all, all that other shit, man. And not that I've shot anybody, but I don't train that way. You know, how you train, how you shoot when you go train is, is, is really what you're going to do uh, in those violent interactions is, is how you're going to fight. And trust me, shooting at the range won't help you. I mean, it can maintain some basic motor skills. That's that's what it'll do. But anyway, <clears throat> I watched them lie. Listen, the training is, is bogus, is bullshit, and you know one of the reasons why nobody wants you to do anything is because no one wants to train you. There's no money to train you. No one wants to pay for your training. So it's easier to have you do nothing and not take on any kind of liability because we don't have the money to train you. So for the most part, yeah, no one's interested in security. They're just trying to give the appearance of it to protect themselves from some kind of liability. You know, that that's what it's about. Well, we can't have no security here because all this stuff is going on. So we got to have some security in case someone uh, sues us and says, well, you know, you should have made the place more secure. But, you know, if you got people standing there, pretty much all they're going to do is call the police. Are you making it more secure? Why you got to hire a security company to do that? You can just hire someone to stand out there and do that. They're not providing security. They're not making anyone feel secure. I mean, you can set up a checkpoint. I mean, is that secure? Well, that might be a little bit security. But, <clears throat> but the people standing at the Kroger supermarket, are they making that place more secure? Is retail security really making that place more secure? What about apartment security where you got guys walking around? Are they really making that place more secure? I don't think so. I mean, if somebody really wants to come out there and do something and they're not, they're not going to stop them, then what? And you don't think the criminals know that? You know, you don't think the boys downtown knew that if all I was going to do was call the police, well, you know what, the police response time, they're going to get out here in about 20 or 30 minutes. So I'm going to go in there for five or ten minutes and do whatever the fuck it is I want to do. And before they come, before they get here, I'm going to leave and be gone. Or maybe I'm going to be in there 15, 20 minutes and do what I want to do. Before they get here, I'm going to be gone. Are you crazy? <laughs> they know that. Don't be stupid. Um, and really, that's another thing. If you keep constantly calling the police, you know, for everything, you know, what happens is the officer. Not the policies, but the officers are like, man, I, you know, their response time is going to slow down, you know, because they don't want to deal with the shit. This is bullshit. Why am I, you know, they're going to respond to the call eventually. <clears throat> and some, sometimes maybe not. And they don't want to be bothered with the bullshit. So the, you can't call them all the time. If you're going to provide security, you need to provide security, but nobody wants security. Not really. And in retail security, commercial security, you know, if someone robs a place and steals the money and they're running away, hey, dog, don't shoot at them. That's not, I mean, really, that's not your job. Uh, don't shoot at them, dude. You'll you be criminally liable. You, you're no longer under threat. The person that they're robbing is no longer under threat. In fact, I talked to an officer that works, at G, that works for G4S at the Bank of America, and he said they had a policy that if that gun leaves the holster, then a shot better be fired or you're fired. I'm like, really? I, that's, that's kind of a reckless ass policy. But if you think about what G4S is there, when you think about security at a, a, a Bank of America is, why they're standing in the parking lot. They're not there to stop a bank robbery. They're there actually to watch the parking lot. That's, 
that's their function and their job to watch people come and go out of the parking lot to kind of make sure that the parking lot is kind of secure and nobody gets robbed in the parking lot. But <clears throat> I don't know if they can do anything about it, to be honest with you. I really don't. I mean, if you're pointing a gun at someone, maybe they can shoot you, but as soon as that gun is, is not pointed at someone and you shoot them in the back or, or they're no longer a threat to the person there, you know, can, can the police charge you? Absolutely, if that's what they want to do. And will that conviction, will that charge stand? There's <clears throat> a good chance of it standing, absolutely. <clears throat> because once that person's not a direct threat and once you're not a direct threat, you're really not supposed to do anything. Ain't that some shit? But, you know, that's, that's the way the law works. So, it's kind of strange. Somebody... I got into a discussion with on, on Facebook, you know, said, you know, I should have tasered that woman that I, I took it too far and this, that, and the third. She said, you know, basically saying I was morally wrong for tasing that woman. And I said, I could be morally wrong and legally dead, but I could be legally right. No, I could be, I could be morally right, I mean, morally wrong, but legally correct. Or I could be, uh, hold on, hold on, stop. Yeah, I could be morally morally wrong but legally correct or I could be morally right and legally dead I mean or beat up and really if you think about <clears throat> you know that taser I mean really it, it's you know you don't have to put your hands on anybody but really you know security for the most part is it's, 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 it's a farce it's a facade for the most part just because of the way they run it and how they train people and they're not training people and people don't have the training and no one wants to pay for the training. Uh, it's all about liability and, and, and where you place it. Most people want to place it on the municipalities because they're, they're better equipped to handle it. Uh, <clears throat> and their people are better trained to handle it. And then most people just don't, don't really know the law. They think they know the law and, you know, the fuck there's a lot of things you got to deal with so instead of dealing with it we'll just tell our people not to do anything and, and lay all that liability off to on the municipality uh that that responds to the 911 call you know it's 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 fucking stupid it's not security security is a farce it really is they're not providing security which which makes me wonder why don't everybody want to have cameras either you know, you should want to have a camera. Hey, that's part of your liability protection. And, you know, what's a better eyewitness than a camera? But then it comes down to who controls the video and this and that and the third. And, you know, how much do we have to invest? And we don't want our dirty laundry aired. And, you know, because it makes our place look dangerous and we won't be able to get renters or we won't be able to get customers and consumers. And, you know, all this, all this competing shit, you know, it's all bullshit. At the end of the day, it's about money, and it's not about security, and it's all crap. It's all crap. Anyway, I, I'm done with it.